the myth that I made $70,000 by financing my Ferrari through a policy. Great one. Yeah. That's good. I was going to say that for the last, but that's when you did good. the intro and you mentioned TikTok, I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm going to go ahead and jump in in case. Did you have, did you have that on there on your list? No, I did not. Okay. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Well, what, what I will say, great videos like, hey, I just bought this Ferrari and it in my by doing so, my cash value increased $70,000, mm -hmm. which my first reaction is like, Dang. heck yeah, yeah let's do some, it. I want some of that. I mean, Ferraris really aren't my thing, but I mean, <laughs> you throw in a Range Rover uh, or those new Hummers. Have you seen the new Hummers? No. They look, yeah. So I'm not really a car guy, but I mean, if we get two Hummers for the Ferrari, I right. mean, yeah. uh, but then when that initial reaction goes like, it kind of sounds weird. How can you create wealth by buying depreciating assets? I mean, so th that to me just doesn't just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. right what which doesn't mean it's untrue what it means is we need to dive in a little deeper and i will say in, in essence what he said is that his policy his cash value increased seventy thousand dollars during during the time that he had financed his car uh seventy thousand more than what he had put into it not arguing that it increased seventy thousand dollars uh what I am arguing is it the reasoning of that increase was not because you used it to finance a Ferrari. That's just how these policies are built. It would have naturally grown 70,000 whether you use it or not, because we need to remember the reason, the main reason why we're using life insurance is because we have the ability to borrow against it. So when we use money, whether it's to buy a Ferrari or a fourplex, we're not using the money from your policy. We're simply using that as collateral and we're borrowing from the investment arm of the insurance company. So that 70,000 was an increase was not directly related to buying a Ferrari. And one thing I thought was interesting, and again, I'm looking at the numbers, he said the Ferrari was two hundred six thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and the monthly payment was twenty seven hundred dollars for five years. <laughs> if you were to multiply twenty seven hundred by sixty, the total is one hundred sixty two thousand. Now, I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, some maybe there was a mistake, or maybe there's some. Um, a missing piece or, or maybe I misunderstood it. Maybe and, there's a rounding error. Yeah. 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 And what I'm saying is I, I, and you're, you will see this a lot on some other people talking about, talking about infinite banking that using this is going to just create wealth out of thin air. That's not how it works. And what I will say, I'm not, I don't, I don't think it's intentional with some of these people are miss that they're spreading. I, I think they don't fully understand it. So I don't think there's any miss, miss ill intent, but at a certain point, if you're going to throw some content to other people, I mean, there, there's an obligation to make sure we're, we're framing it correctly. You want to see the entire episode? Click here. If you want to learn how investors use infinite banking to increase their returns and lower their taxes, click here. If you want to see if infinite banking is for you and you have some questions, Hop on a discovery call with us and one of our coaches. The link for that will be in the description.